Hi, Jason. Can you hear me, Jason? Okay, good. Oh, I was muted. Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Good evening. Were your ears burning earlier today, Jason? Kathy what? Haddad and I were passing out books at the Kennedy parking lot to DA Humanities students. And she told me, she said very nice things about you. And then I said very nice things about you. And we had a real Jason is a good guy fest. Wow. But just let you know, your ears should have been burning. Where, where are those moments all the other times? But uh, yes, uh, you are obviously awesome. And, and what I have met with Ms. Haddad, uh, she's great too. So just let you know, we were we oh. said positive things about you. I'll take it when I can get it, uh, Miss Abby. Thank you. I just came out from a Bloomington online parent meeting, very similar to this. So nice. Just keep the parent meetings rolling. Well, I um didn't feel like I had time to drive home from book distribution, so I'm just I'm gonna stay. I'm I'm just here at Kennedy. How many kids came or families came? Um, a lot. Um, we, you know, I've got some kids that didn't come, but I got out a lot of books and some Chromebooks and we got to meet people in person and that was nice. Always good. Like, that was good. And, and so, you'll restate when you do this one that they still need to come next week to do other stuff? Yeah, I've been, I've been clear about that, Jason. Don't worry. Well, I am worried. Okay. Well, you've got pictures going for you. People need pictures. They're not seniors, like so. They were. They're gonna come to school. They're gonna get the pictures. Agreed. So it's seven o'clock now. I think we should wait a little bit longer. We're at twenty-seven participants. So that's great. So at least twenty-five families. We've got closer to thirty-ish kids in the cohort. So I want to give a couple more minutes, and then we'll get started. I am recording it for parents that um, aren't able to come tonight. And I have changed some schedules around so that we will be able to um, hopefully get, because I know that some people have got an orchestra event that starts at 7.30 that they need to get to. As Jason said, this is the evening of meetings. Oh, and there's a cute dog at the meeting. Cute dog, hi dog, little white puppy. Oh, oh and the dog decided to lick her owner, that's nice. I want to see if I can see all of you. See if we have our. Oh, good. We've got you now. And then do we have Corey? And we have Corey. Yay. Good. So we've got teachers. We'll wait one more minute and then we will get started. Oh, we're at 31 participants. That's good. Okay, so we will get started. Um, hi, my name is Meredith, and we wanted to give a little orientation to DA STEM. Some of you were in the DA Humanities meeting. We have about a third of the cohort is in both programs. And so some of these slides are repetition, but the stuff that isn't repetition, I've put near the front. Um, so that if after we get to stuff that you already know, and you've met your teachers, you could log out if, if, if you wanted to. But also, I, I, rec I had at least one family email me that there's an orchestra meeting tonight, and so I understand that people have multiple meetings that they have to get to. So our game plan for this evening is to do some introductions, to talk you through what distance learning will look like this fall, because I've had a lot of people ask me about that. Um, and then to have the teachers um, have some time to be able to talk to you about what the class will be like, and so that you can get a sense of who they are. And then I want to talk through the actual, some, some information about the classes themselves, what support we, the gifted and talented department offer, and then have time for questions and answers. So that's sort of the, the game plan for tonight. 
Um, Akram Osman, who's the new principal at Kennedy High School, um, wanted me to tell Kennedy students that he's super excited to work with you. He was able to come to the DA Humanities meeting. He's not able to come tonight. Um, he's still at um, another meeting, but he wanted to extend his, his hellos. I wanted to give Jason Anderson, the principal of, Ken of Jefferson High School, the opportunity to, to welcome Jefferson students. Go for it. Yes, good evening, everyone. Thanks for, for joining us. Thanks for being here, much appreciated. Congratulations um, on participation in this, uh, this very impressive program. I've, I've been around for, for a handful of years now and been a part of various DA events and graduations and there. It's always so impressive, the stuff that, uh, that you all are capable of. Uh, already well surpassed my skill set in most of these fields, but uh, I don't know that that takes too much sometimes. But congrats anyways, again, I really enjoy working with you all. Um, uh, uh, it's nice to, you know, new, new Jaguars, congrats, new Eagles, congrats. Um, uh, enjoy your time, enjoy your experience. Thank you. Um, I don't know if Erin Boltick has had a chance to log in yet. I know that she was going to be joining us from another, from another event. Is Erin there? Okay. So when Erin, yes, I'm here. All right. So, um, this is Erin Boltick. She's the director of Gifted and Talented. Uh, many of you are coming from our middle school program, but not all of you. And so you might already know Erin, but I wanted to give Director Boltick a chance to welcome you to the program as well. All right, so welcome everyone. It's uh, a different year, but it's going to be an equally exciting year. And I'm, um, I'm just happy to be here with all of you tonight and let's let's make this happen all right so what's exciting about this year's da program is that this is our first year that we've ever had um, the da stem program actually here in bloomington public schools it has historically been at the college and there have been some challenges as well as successes with that and what i'm excited about with the teachers that we've chosen we're going to get all of the beneficial things that we got from the acceleration that we did at normandale but we're also going to get some benefits that we weren't able to get at normandale like for example we're not going to have two different spring breaks thereby meaning that our students get zero spring break things like that and so i'm really excited that we have janelle woods and Corey Carafal is a part of our program. And so I was hoping that Janelle and Corey could introduce themselves to you and tell you maybe a little bit about themselves because they're gonna be the teachers that you're gonna work with. And I will have them tell you a little bit about their courses and what they're gonna teach on a different slide. So Janelle, do you wanna go first? Sure. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, my name is Janelle Woods. I have been teaching at Jefferson. This is my 22nd year there. Um, I've taught a range of all different kinds of classes. Um, I have taught a lot of honors pre-calc in the past year, so that is something I've been teaching a lot of, so I'm excited to do that along with um, Algebra 2. Um, a couple other things about me. I have three children. My oldest is a um, sophomore in college, and then I have um, a junior and a seventh grader. So I'm super excited, um, a little nervous, but really excited to start this program um, and see what we can do. Thank you, Janelle. Corey, do you wanna go next? Uh, sure, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Corey Carafel. I'm beginning my 12th year teaching science at Jefferson, and I've taught EP chemistry all of those uh, 12 years, uh, but this will be the first go at uh, a program like this, where we're actually combining two different AP courses into one class. I'm sure uh, we'll talk more about that this evening. So I'm very glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. All right. So um, hopefully you've had a chance to um, read emails from Jason or Akram, like both of the principals sent out materials earlier in the week that sort of showed families this calendar. What I want you to understand is, is that while we're doing distance learning, our students are going to be in periods one or period two as a part of this program. And so what our students are going to do is that they are going to um, have either Janelle or Corey on that day. And they're going to divide up the Wednesdays and sort of talk to talk to each other about how to do that. But so the fact is, is that um, you're going to have your and the way that we're going to do it is that you're going to have your period one class for the full hour. You're going to have your period two class for the full hour. 
And the idea is that you're going to have two hours with both of, with, with both of these classes. And then they're going to tell you what their plans are for this Wednesday. And you're going to get a link from your teachers to be able to log on. And that's, um, and that's how we're going to do things as long as that we're doing distance learning. Um, so I would think it's important for you to understand that that's an amendment to this schedule. Um, and then you will then afterwards, then you'll, you know, hang up from that call and then you will go to whatever the login is for your period three class. Um, and that's what you would, that's what you would do next. And so just to give you a sense of that, um, we are, an important thing to think about in this program is, is that you are going to, you've said that you wanted to be in this program because you are an accelerated learner, you're an advanced thinker, and I think it's important to understand that Ms. Woods and Mr. Carafal are going to give you opportunities to learn this material, but you are really going to be in the driver's seat. And that was going to be true even if we weren't doing distance learning, but that's super double true doing distance learning because you are going to need to figure out, you know what, I've got this or oops, I need more practice. And then it's going to be your responsibility to communicate with Ms. Woods or Mr. Careful and be like, you know, I'm struggling. I know how to do this assignment with my notes, but I can't seem to figure out how to do it without my notes. And you're going to need to figure that out before you get to the test. And so what I like about this schedule is if you notice, there are lots of times in this schedule where you are not in class. And those are times that you could set up a meeting with Mr. Carafel or Ms. Woods, or where you could be working on your own to perfect these skills. And I think that that's an important thing that you need to think about as a learner, as a part of this distance learning program. In a program where we're doing so much content in such a short period of time, you are never going to get as much practice as other kids. So for example, normally students at Jefferson and Kennedy take Honors Algebra 2 over the course of the whole year and you're doing it in half a year, so you already weren't getting as much practice as some other kids. But being a DA student means that you have to be metacognitive. You have to think about your thinking. And so you need to think about, do I really get this, or do I just know how to do it when I watch the video? Or do I just know how to do it when I can ask my friends for help? And so that's what you need to do, and then you've got time built into the schedule to get that help, okay? Or to get that practice in. This is an example of my base groups that I've set up for one of my classes. As you can tell, I really like action figures, I mean, action heroes. Um, and so you, I've had several parents reach out to me and say that they're really concerned about how our kids gonna be able to get to know each other. And the fact is, is that we have kids from all three middle schools in Bloomington coming together to be in this program. And we have kids coming in from out of the district. And so our teachers know that they need to shuffle things up and get people together. And so there will be opportunities where students will break up. And so something that you're gonna hear, not just in the DA program, but actually in all your Jefferson and Kennedy classes is about base groups and having groups of people that you are gonna pop into to be able to work with those people. And so just, I think that's important for parents to know because I've had a lot of parents ask me, how is this distance learning thing gonna work? So to go more in depth about how this distance learning thing is gonna work, um, I'm gonna turn it over to, and I'm gonna actually take it out of this so that you can see Janelle's face better. Um, so I'm, we're gonna turn it over to Janelle. And so if you could, Janelle, tell us about, oh, but it's, look, it's, it's already on Mr. Corfo. We'll start with Mr. Corfo, because he's already there. Mr. Corfo, why don't you tell us about how your class is gonna go during distance learning and what students are gonna be studying with you? Well, we have the extra challenge of having two different curriculums being combined. Um, we're going to start with computer science, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, the environmental science curriculum um, involves more of a, a lab component that hopefully later in the year we'll be able to bring a little more into play. You know, if that doesn't happen, we've got a lot of other things we could do too, but the computer science makes a lot more sense at the beginning. But we're not going to completely hold off on the environmental science. We're going to sprinkle some of the big ideas in um, probably towards the middle of October, end of October. Um, if there's questions later on, I can get into the more specifics about what the, the content is gonna be all about. Um, but just know it is, it is going to be a, a rigorous course and we're looking at a lot of very, very cool topics. I'm, I'm really excited to explore uh, all this content with you because environmental science hasn't been offered in uh, our high schools before. And computer science is a brand new program uh, that just got started last year. And so the fact that uh, you're involved in this inaugural 
program at Kennedy and Jefferson, I think, uh, I think it's exciting and I'm glad to be part of it. Cool, thank you. How about Ms. Woods? How about if you tell us about what distance learning will be like with you? Um, so we are, again, doing the two math classes, Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc. Uh, luckily, there's some overlap of some of the same topics, so um, we should be able to cover everything we need to um, in a good manner. I've got it all laid out, so um, hopefully that will work. It will be a lot of um, like watching videos on your own of me explaining how to do something, and then when we get together during the synchronous times, will be more of the opportunity for you to like work in groups together, um, and go into more challenging problems and things like that. So, um, and then there will be office hours available. So if you want to come in um, during those times or you can set up an appointment with me to get extra help. So um, really excited about all the things that we are gonna try to do here in this distance learning. All right, thank you. And as both of them said, we're obviously gonna have time to be able to do you know, Q&A as well. But I wanted to, because I had several people say that they wouldn't be able to stay for the whole meeting, I wanted people to be able to, at a minimum, be able to meet Mr. Carafel and Ms. Woods. Okay? All right. So I wanted to give you some advice in terms of thinking about how to be a successful distance learner. Um, we had the benefit of doing some of these same classes last year with our students in the spring. And my students really, from watching them really gave me some good tips about like how to be a successful distance learner. And the first thing is, is that I really want to recommend to parents and to students to set a place and a time for learning every day. If you notice on the schedule that both principals have sent to you, you've got times during the day for breaks. So it doesn't have to just be like, I am working like the, during the whole day. And to be honest, as a part of this program, you are going to have to put in some evenings too. Like you're not probably going to be able to get all of your work done just during the actual school day. Um, but having a place and a time for learning each day, like a place in your room or a place in your house, that's where, that's where you're going to do your working at. And to get a consistent schedule. So the, and like the students who were the most successful last year, I know this is going to shock you, were the ones who actually went to sleep at night. The people who did not stay up till two in the morning playing video games. It's so cute. I love getting to watch the parents like look at their students' faces at this point where they're like, see, I told you it's not a good idea. Um, but the deal is, is that getting enough sleep every night is a critical factor in you being a good learner, but also just having a consistent schedule, like so that your body knows, okay, this is the time I'm supposed to be awake and my brain's supposed to work. That just because you're doing learning from home doesn't mean that you should throw away all these good habits that you actually have had a lot of practice at. It's important to communicate regularly with your teacher to make sure you know what you need to accomplish and to ask for help prioritizing. Like Ms. Wood said, there'll be times where you get to like, you know, have office hours. Some of your teachers might say that like, those are like, hey, you can pop in at this time. Other teachers might say, hey, you have to arrange it with me. But either way, there's plenty of time built into that schedule for you to meet with your teachers. But you're gonna need to work on your self-advocacy skill. This is an important thing for you as a learner you need to learn how to figure out what you want and then ask for what you need, okay? Um, you've got friends as well as you're gonna get set up into base groups that you can ask for help with between classes so that you can be like, hey, I think I know what's going on, but do I really? You know, like to, you, everybody needs a community of learners, okay? And the benefit of being in a cohort is that you have a community of learners. That is always the biggest strength of our program is that people have a community but you gotta take advantage of that community, okay? You wanna to come to class sessions ready to discuss the assigned reading, or as Ms. Wood said, the, the assigned video, to practice that mathematical concept or that scientific concept. What you don't wanna do is be like, I'm sure I'll be fine, and then be like, I have no idea what's going on. And then later on, you're watching the video, but you would have gotten way more out of that class or even that video if you would have watched, like these things are supposed to happen in the right order. Okay, so I want you to use your calendar and get your ducks in a row so that you can be like, okay, I'm supposed to know about this. So now I can come and apply it and then ask my questions when I have my actual teacher here. Okay, last year, I don't know if any of you did this. I had students who during distance learning would send me questions at two in the morning and they would be surprised that I didn't answer them. 
I am never going to answer a question at two in the morning because I'm asleep. So um, I just think that's important for you to think about that you want to be ready to do what the professor is doing at that moment so that you can get the most out of that class time. And so that your brain will be going choo 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 choo. If your brain is doing that later, like on Saturday, a week later, you're missing out on an opportunity to actually put even more pieces of that puzzle together. And so that you can have sort of your math brain and your science brain going, yeah, I got that. Okay. I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but last year I had a bunch of students turn things into me that had, they were just called DA. And then later on when they tried to find them, they couldn't find any of them because they were all named DA. Like, so labeling your work, putting it all in the same place. Like last year, I noticed some of my students, their room just became a different manifestation of their backpack, meaning it was a larger space of places to lose things. You know, and so I just think it's important that even though you're learning from home, you wanna develop some organizational systems so that you can keep track of your assignments, when they're due, when they're done, where do they go? You know, so you've, you've got that stuff together, okay? Um, it's, I've already had several parents tell me that they're a little overwhelmed. And to be honest, I'm the parent of a sixth grader. I am also overwhelmed. Okay. I get an, e I get at least three emails from BPS a day. Okay. So I get it. I am also overwhelmed, but it's going to be important to have some sort of calendar that you can keep track of all these different assignments on and to be able to, and to have some like Google doc or something that you can keep track of the different links for your, for your different class meets. And so I just want to encourage you to use that time on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week when you're getting your materials, you're picking up your Chromebook, like you've got time in your, in your day to set that up, but also to use that time to sort of get organized for the school year. Because that I think is gonna be a real challenge of distance learning. The thing strategically about whether or not you do better on assignments if you did them with a buddy or on your own, sometimes people get a false sense of security of how well they're able to do things if they always do things with a friend. And so like, you don't want to show up for Ms. Woods' test being like, I've got this. And then being like, do I don't have this because I always did my homework with my friends. But I think that isolation factor is key. So sometimes having a study buddy and doing your homework with that person could make school more motivating for you. So I just want you to think about when it would be better to do things with people or by yourself. Because I had a lot of students whose attitudes about distance learning really turned around last year when they were able to do things with a buddy. And then lastly, ask for help. Okay. Like if Ms. Woods explains a concept to you or Mr. Careful explains a concept to you and you don't get it, guess what? I bet there's a YouTube video or I bet there's a Khan Academy video. I bet there's another friend in your class who could help you with that. But you want to get that, you want to self-advocate is what I'm trying to say. That's going to be really the key to being successful at any time, but I think particularly to be successful as a distance learner. Okay. For Mr. Carafel's class, you are going to get the opportunity to um, take two, um, I don't actually think computer science, you take an AP exam, right? Corey, you're turning in a portfolio. portfolio. Uh, this year, there will be, the exam will be making a return. That's the, uh, the okay. current news. Yep. All right, cool. So the students are going to enroll in AP classroom and then register for the exams in November. And when that happens, Mr. Carafel will, will tell you about that. The exams as of right now are going to be given in May. And if the students get a three, four, or five on that exam, then they will have the opportunity to earn college credit. And colleges explain this on their um, websites for like what scores you have to get in order to be able to get college credit. But it means that, first of all, you're showing to a college, hey, I'm an advanced learner. I've been working really hard. I've been taking college level classes since the ninth grade. But it also means that when you get to college, you're going to be able to jump into that 200 level class, that, you know, that more complicated class, as opposed to taking that, you know, introduction material. And so that's going to be, that's going to make college right off the bat already more fun for you. And so you'll have the opportunity to sit for two exams in the spring. One will be environmental science and then one will be AP computer science. Um, it's important to understand that Ms. Woods and Mr. Carafel are doing what other students who are still advanced learners would be doing in an, in an entire year. And you're gonna be doing it in half a year, okay? That's what the DA program is offering you. That is what you signed up to do. And so there's some real challenges with that. So the teachers are gonna cover the content at a faster pace. 
and students are going to be a, 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 the teachers have the right to assume that you are going to come prepared for class because otherwise they can't do this material in half the amount of time. So it means that if Ms. Woods or Mr. Carafel say that you're supposed to read something or you're supposed to watch this video and show up to class having read it, you should do that because they're supposed to take you woo, and jump into this material on a more sophisticated level. And so it's like you're jumping in the deep end learning complicated swimming strokes, okay? And I don't want you to drown. I want you to be successful. And so I want you to take that, th those plans that Mr. Woods and, I'm sorry, that Ms. Woods and Mr. Careful give you so that you can be successful. I want you to take those plans seriously. What's going to be challenging is, is that, and this is true in DA, regardless of where we're talking about, DA Humanities, DA STEM, DA at Jefferson and Kennedy, DA at Normandale, is that students are going to need to be thoughtful about to what degree they need more academic practice, okay? In the regular classroom, or for you, just the traditional AP Honors classroom, many of you are like, wow, we're doing the same thing over and over again. I want to beat my head against the wall. This is, this is really boring. You're not going to get bored, okay? That is not going to be a problem this year. Instead, the problem might be at different moments that you're like, I get this but I'm not good enough at it yet. So therefore I need more practice. And so Ms. Woods and Mr. Careful might not ask you to do enough practice to get to that level of mastery. And so you are gonna have to think about your thinking. You're gonna have to think about, yes, I've got this. I don't have this. And you're gonna need to, they're, they're gonna model this for you to sort of figure out, yes, I'm good to go. Nope, I'm not good to go. But this is something that you're gonna need to think about. One of the things that I'm gonna send out to parents and you later on this week, if, but I also think Janelle might be having you read this, is an article from a book I really like called A Mind from Numbers, How to Excel at Math and Science. And it talks about like one strategy they recommend, which I love, is that if you're doing a math problem and you need to use your notes, you need to use the video, you need to use your friend, if you need to use other things to figure out how to do that problem, you wanna flag that problem and then the next day, you want to give yourself that problem again, but not use any of your notes, not use the videos, because you need opportunity to see, did I master this or was I just completing my homework? That is the number one problem my DA students have, is they think completing their homework means that they're done. Does that make sense to you? That how you could finish your homework but actually not have achieved mastery? And it's because many of you have never had to study before. And so the goal of this program is to actually accelerate you enough, not so that you drown, accelerate you enough so that you actually learn the study skills that your peers learned in middle school and that other people have to learn so that you can be successful when you go to college and you don't have your parents to help you and support you. And so this is supposed to be a safe environment for you to get that type of acceleration so you can master these types of skills. And so this is something you're gonna to need to think about and this is something that Ms. Woods and Mr. Carroll are gonna be thinking about as well in terms of how do we get you enough practice so that you can be successful. So for those of you who are wondering, what is my role? So I teach some of you, because some of you are in the, in the gifted humanities program. But in terms of the services that I provide the STEM students, is that first of all, I provide professional development and support for teachers. So my job is to help make Ms. Woods and Mr. Carafel the best teachers they can be. That actually is already gonna be pretty easy for me because these are two really amazing teachers. Um, like, I'll be honest, if my student was in this program, I would want these two to be the teachers for my student, okay? And so they are gonna do an amazing job, but it is my job to help make them even better. Okay. It's also my job to help monitor students' academic and social emotional concerns. One of the challenges of distance learning is that that is harder for me to do. So what I'm going to need to do, and there's another slide that talks about this, is I'm going to need parents to help me with this. So I'm going to talk to Ms. Woods and I'm going to talk to Mr. Carafel about how we think you're doing socially and emotionally. But the fact is, is that it's very hard on a little screen like this to figure out, are you depressed? That is really hard to tell. So I'm gonna really need parents to help me with that so that we can make sure that you get the services that you need. It's my job to advocate for gifted kids and BPS. And I'll be honest, if you're a kid in my caseload, I'm a pitbull. 
I will fight for what you need. So if you need something from BPS and you are not getting it, you should ask for it because that is my job. My job is to help you get what you need in order to be a successful learner. Um, if you are, um, we're gonna have conversations about going to college. Normally we take students to colleges to go and visit them. I don't think that's gonna happen this year, or if it does, it will be at the earliest third trimester, but right now BPS is a no field trips policy. Um, and I don't think most colleges are doing tours right now, but we can have some Zoom meetings that I can set up where you could meet with students who are at college, who went to BPS, who can talk about their college experience, and that we will still do. And I will offer, and, and I do do academic advising for students. Um, most of you have received emails from me. I do a lot of communicating with parents. I want parents to know what's going on. I represent the gifted department at 504 IEP meetings. Um, all IEPs and 504s for middle school have to be redone by the middle of October. So if you are a student who has an IEP or a 504, I will be invited to your, to your meeting. Um, you are in the inaugural year, not of DA STEM, because this program has been, this is its sixth year, but you are in the inaugural program of this year being in BPS. And so I will be talking with you and trying to get a sense of what are we doing right and what are the things that we need to improve, okay? And so that is my job, is to make this program the best it can be. And then lastly, it's my job to recruit students for this program. And most of you, that is how you met me, is that I tried to recruit you. So parents, as I said before, I want you to pay attention to signs for depression, anxiety, perfectionism. I noted, not just in our students, but in, you know, students around the country that, you know, distance learning can affect people. And we did have some students who struggled with depression last year who hadn't struggled with depression before. We did have students who struggled with anxiety last year who hadn't struggled with anxiety before. And we had students struggle with perfectionism that hadn't struggled with um, perfectionism before. And so I really think it's important for you to sort of pay attention as a parent to do you see changes in your students' behavior changes in your students emotions because if you do we should be we should be talking because i want to talk to your student talk to your other students teachers and see if there's a way that i can provide support for your student last year i think that one thing i did see was that there were some students who we had a dip in test scores or a dip in their grades and and it looked like some of these students were underachieving but in reality, what I saw for some of our students was a real rise in perfectionism, where they were like, nope, it's not perfect, I'm not turning it in, and because I wasn't there or their other teachers weren't there to like physically take it out of their hands, like they were like, I, I'm not turning it in. And so th those are the types of things that like we need to then struggle with those kids about, because the fact is, is that perfection is not, a, is not a reality, but also Sometimes you just need to focus on the learning and then move on. But we have a lot of experience in the gifted and talent department helping our gifted students with those things. But we're gonna need to be in communication about whether or not um, your student is gonna need some support. And then lastly, in a normal year, because of this type of acceleration, we have a lot of kids who experience a loss of academic confidence. And that's because for the first time in their life, they're like, I had to study, whoa. And then, Sometimes people have the wrong response to that and they go, I must not be gifted or I must not be smart anymore or I must not be good at STEM. And all those are the wrong answer. Most people have to study. Most people have to learn how to learn. And so if you are having to learn how to learn, that means we've actually done our job because that is one of the goals of this program. But if you are as a parent or as a teacher seeing that the student has gone from being like, yeah, I can do it to, no, I can't do it. Then that's where I need to come in and help provide support for that student because that is something that happens for most of our students for the first time. They get their first B or their first C on something and it blows their mind. And so that's my job is to help those kids get back on the horse, okay? And if you see signs of any of these things, please reach out to me. You could also reach out to their counselor. You could reach out to both of us, but I wanna make sure that we have students' needs met, okay? That is not for you. All right, now we are at time for questions. And these could be questions for me, they could be questions for Ms. Woods, they could be questions for Mr. Carafel, but I want to, um, 
I want to get your questions answered. Oh, they could also be questions for Mr. Anderson because he's like, he answered like half of the questions at our last Q and A. He did a very nice job. He got an A. He didn't know that I was grading him, but he got an A. So questions that you guys have, and I'll be honest, um, we have 34 people. And so it is gonna be important not to try to talk over other people, but I think that we can, people can jump in and if you, and if you, if somebody else is asking a question and you know you wanna ask the next one, for example, you could type in the chat your question or you could just jump in, unmute yourself and then jump in after somebody else's question is done. Okay, so who would like to ask the first question? Okay, are we gonna have MAP and MCA testing this year? Oh, I'm so excited that Mr. Anderson is in on this call. Mr. Anderson, are we gonna have MAP and MCA testing this year? Uh, so some of that stuff is still in flux. <laughs> MAP testing in the fall, I believe, has been canceled. Uh, but as far as now, the state has not canceled MCA tests next spring. Okay, and so, there you go, that is the word. So as, and, and I'll be honest, even if Mr. Anderson was to say this is happening, that it still might not be happening. I've been using, um, and probably <laughs> a lot of my teachers are sick of it, I've been using the three day rule, mm -hmm. which is that I can, I can pretty confidently tell you what the next three days looks like. Anything past that, I'm just guessing. Um, so yes, I would agree with, with you there, Ms. Abby. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's legit. So yes, but we, we don't have those types of tests in the fall and that is a blessing. That is a good thing because we don't need more stuff to try to figure out right now. And as of right now, the AP exams are still scheduled for the spring, but just to let people know, last year we had the AP exams even though we had a pandemic, you know, and people still got college credit. And so just to let you know, like that, that would work out too. Okay, our next question is, would you cover the daily class schedule again? Will the students have synchronous time with Ms. Woods and Mr. Carafal on the same day? So I'm gonna go back to my screen and I'm going to go back to that schedule page. And I, I think that this is a legit question because this is, this is a whole new universe. So Janelle or Corey, do you wanna talk them through how we're gonna do the schedule? I can Who's talk to that today? a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so uh, officially, you have me for your first period class, and that's whether you're at Kennedy or Jefferson. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, Ms. Woods and I have worked out that your second hour class on Mondays and Thursdays, which you'd normally have a, an asynchronous time for your math side of the, the STEM program, you will continue working with me uh, synchronously. Um, while we have some flexibility there, that is, uh, that is our current schedule. One hour uh, with me on Mondays and Thursdays, one hour with um, Woods on Tuesdays and Fridays. And Wednesday, there'll be some flexibility. It's not just about our DA program. Mrs. Woods and I have other classes we need to also consider on that day, but uh, we'll work out those details as, uh, as we go through things. Uh, the other thing I did wanna mention, I think Meredith, we had talked about that we were actually gonna start at 8.55. Yes. Uh, and go from 8.55 to 9.55 every day. So they could count on being in our class on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday for sure from 8.55 to 9.55 because then that gave them a little break, five minutes break right before their third hour class right. would begin. Which would be great because for some of them, I am their third hour teacher and um, I would like people to be able to come to my class having gone to the bathroom and with a, with, with, you know, a water bottle filled or do you know what I'm saying? Like whatever they need, like we, our goal isn't to run them into the ground. But we do want to offer enough opportunities for students to actually connect with us and to connect with each other. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop the sharing on that. Um, how do you get the study materials? That's the next question. Can one of you guys talk about how, how people are going to get materials for your class? Um, well, I'm, all of the things that they're going to need for my class, they'll be able to access for, via um, Canvas. Um, there is a textbook, but we don't really use it, but we do have it. So um, not the pickup day that's next week, but they will have pickup days every few weeks after that. Uh, we'll have an optional pickup. So if your kid wants to choose to get the math book to have that at home as an additional resource, um, we'll have a sign up. For them to do that and then they can come into school and get 
uh, their math book, but everything else they'll need, all the videos, um, notes if they want to take notes, um, worksheets if we have them. Uh, their homework is all like online. It's um, randomly generated questions in their homework and then they get immediate feedback whether they get it right or wrong and they get to keep working on it until they get it correct. So uh, that's how it will work in math. Awesome. And also, um, Janelle, just to let you know, when we get to that time, you and I should talk so that I can help get the books to Kennedy for the Kennedy students. Okay. Corey, do you want to talk about how students are going to get their study materials? Yep. Uh, so for AP Environmental Science, we will be using the textbook pretty extensively. Um, and there is a, an online component through uh, Pearson's Mastering System, which is the same system that colleges use when they're using this uh, curriculum. Unfortunately, we, we ordered our curriculum over the summer and we were notified last week that due to COVID-19, uh, our textbooks are still in the warehouse. That's okay. That's okay because we're going to start with the computer science aspect of things, which is ready to go 100%. And uh, that side is all through code.org, which is a nonprofit, very, very uh, popular and successful and highly rated uh, curriculum that uh, we'll be using throughout the year. And that's, you won't have to do uh, any pre-arrangement. We'll, we'll talk about that when we start meeting uh, late next week and we'll get you all set up on that system. Okay. When those books come to Corey, you and I will just have to partner so I can get the textbooks for the Kennedy kids to Kennedy. Sounds good. Um, this next question, question is, are my classes also first period? I teach periods three and four. And so it is possible to be in the humanities cohort and the STEM cohort because like the classes don't overlap. So that's, that's not an issue. At a high level, what topic areas will be covered in computer science, Mr. Carafel? So there, for AP computer science, there's actually two different levels uh, that schools offer. Uh, one is AP computer science, A, which is focused on the language of Java and is very similar to a, a college course for people that are seeking to get into uh, software engineering, uh, electrical engineering, computers in general. Um, and then there's AP Computer Science Principles, which is a freshman CS, Computer Science 101 course, uh, meant for anyone, people that are looking for a launch pad to get into uh, IT, information technology, or just uh, looking to broaden their backgrounds. And so we're, our curriculum, it hits all the major foundational points of computer science. So we're going to learn, we're going to get into uh, how does the internet work? We're going to talk about big data. We're going to talk about the nature of digital information, but we're also going to get into some programming aspects, um, not just, you know, raw coding, but also logistical thinking, how to approach problem solving. Uh, for any of you that have uh, a little bit of programming background, which is absolutely not required for this course, it's not a prerequisite, um, you're probably familiar with the idea that computer programming is not just about the math problems, it's not just about the coding. And so we delve in uh, behind the scenes and really dig into things. And for those of you that are really curious about uh, the super fine details, we do eventually code things in JavaScript. And that's because our code.org curriculum focuses on JavaScript. Uh, but then later in the year, if we want to, if you kind of want to, on your own, want to look at some other languages, we can provide some support there as well. Cool. Um, and Corey, if you get to a point where you ever want to have some guest speakers, we do have, a, we do have multiple Jefferson alumni who do computer programming professionally, that if you wanted to have some Zoom conversations um, that are awesome people. I can think of a few off my head, uh, off the top of my head who took me for, with uh, AP Chemistry. Okay, so, yeah. we've, got, we've got several of our former students who live in the Seattle area who are all working in that little hub. Nice. All right, so our next question is, will all the computer science work be done using the Chromebook or will students need access to another computer at home? Code.org is fantastic for being completely compatible with uh, your Chrome browser on your Chromebook. And so we're good to go. Um, you'll probably want a calculator, the same calculator they have in uh, Mrs. Wood's class. Um, we could eventually run some apps optionally, uh, totally independent on a, uh, on the individual if you want to do some stuff on your other home computer, but our Chromebooks will house all of our required curriculum. And that's a real benefit to doing it at Jefferson as opposed to at Normandale. At Normandale, the students had to be in the actual computer lab to use their computer programs. And I know this isn't a surprise to any of you ninth grade parents, ninth graders can't drive. 
So like if you needed to more time to work on your program, you had to actually physically go to Normandale and that is challenging for a 14 year old. And so this is really beneficial. It means that our kids are gonna be able to use um, and develop their computer programming skills, but on the actual computers that Bloomington Public Schools have bought for them. And so this is gonna be a really good fit for our kids. Um, Janelle, can you talk about what, um, what calculator you want students to have? I just happen to have one sitting by oh, on the table. <laughs> um, so a TI 84 plus is um, what most people have, but a TI 83 is good. There's TI 80, whatever. Uh, pretty much any Texas instrument is the best because that's what um, we are familiar with. There are Casios. Um, but things are different. So if I'm explaining something like how to do something on this calculator and you don't have it, then I just say like, well, you're going to have to Google how to do that on that kind of one. So um, this is great too if your kid ever plans on taking uh, any other, you know, next year for um, AP Calc and also if they're ever going to take AP Stats, all of that, this calculator will do it also. Again, it's a Texas instrument. This one's a TI-84+. plus. Um, there's like the TI-84 plus Silver Edition. Um, there's a lot of other ones, but pretty much any of these would work. But if you have ever have a question, you can email me or something if you're wondering if that particular one would work. Thank you. Other questions that people have? Well, all the computer science, nope. Okay, how about other school supplies for these classes? Are there any other sc school supplies that students need to have for our DA classes? Uh, something to write on and something to write with. Um, you'll be turning in all of your assignments digitally and most of them will be, again, like using this, um, it's called My Open Math, um, where they type in their math answer on the computer. Um, other things may be like they'd have to create a video explaining how to do a math problem, um, but they should definitely have um, paper to do their math on because I still want to see their work. Uh, and it should be like you were talked about earlier, Meredith, like organized, like in a notebook in order so they can find um, things. That's Corey, do you have anything you want to add about school supplies that students would need? Well, on a traditional uh, in-person dynamic, our AP Environmental Science course would require a little bit more. Uh, we'd require uh, a lab notebook and a few other materials. But the College Board has given all teachers across the nation and throughout the world official permission to go completely digital with all of the uh, lab components. So we're, I think we're going to be pretty much good to go with uh, the materials you find around the house and that which uh, Mrs. Woods already talked about. Okay. All right. Any other questions that parents or students have? Um, oh, Aaron, you're so silly. All right, Ian can, Ian can type his answer there. Um, are there other questions from students or parents for Mr. Woods or myself or for Mr. Carafel? Because I think Mr. Anderson left. Did he leave? He's here, but his kids are yelling at each other right outside the window, so he's distracted. Um, that's okay. All right. So Mr. Anderson can also answer questions too. I can answer questions. Happy to. There were more the other the other night, but maybe they got all their questions out then. That's okay. Um, Corey, are you going to be using Canvas too? Yep, uh, we'll be housing Canvas. Um, the even our textbooks should roll through Canvas. Okay. Uh, Except I should I should say code.org. Um, there's something called Code Studio. You need a, a developing a development area, of course, when you're doing uh, programming that kind of thing. And all of that will be in the code.org uh, native platform. Again, just uh, driven through the browser. But Canvas, the Canvas calendar, um, and a separate Google Doc that I call the Daily Page. That is how you're going to be able to keep track of everything. So very much like your other courses. Okay, cool. And so for those of you who haven't been in Canvas before, when you log into the hub, um, you know, you, you'll be able to, you know, you're going to do your attendance and things like that. 
but then also like when you are going to your to that BPS page where you've got the block for the hub and these other things like you're gonna you know click the block for Canvas and you will be automatically um, already been placed in these two Canvas courses. Okay, um, and so when you come to do in next week on Tuesday or Wednesday, you're going to actually you guys are Tuesday because you guys are ninth graders. So you're going to go to Kennedy, Kennedy or Jefferson. And when you are picking up your stuff, you should get your um, your yearbook then. And Jefferson, you guys are going to do your school pictures, I believe on Tuesday when you're there. And I believe at Kennedy, you have to come in again on Thursday to do that. Okay. Um, where can I find a personal schedule with all of my classes? If you log into the hub, you will be able to see what your classes are. And so if you log into the, and, and you should definitely between now and next Tuesday, definitely log into the hub so you can make sure that you are able to, and you should make sure that you can, sh you can check your school email too. You want to do that, but that's why we're having, you know, we want people to be good to go. So on Thursday, when you're going to your very first class, that's you, Mr. Carafel, right? Your Thursday? I am on Thursday, yes. So like you'll know, where am I supposed to go for Mr. Carafel's class? You have already been to the school Canvas page, been to the Canvas page for his class. You've already checked his email, your email, that type of stuff. So we really want people to, um, like, so that information is gonna be on the hub, but you, you're definitely gonna need to be looking in your email, looking at Canvas between now and next Thursday. Does it have a class time? Um, yes, on the hub, it does have a class time. Um, it's just that it, it might not necessarily correlate because of what we were talking about here, like that, you know, that we want your period one class to start at 8.55 so that you're, so that you can leave by, you know, five minutes before. Yes, it, do, it does have those, those, those class times. Any other questions? That is a good question. I was in a previous meeting that the, there are still class times in the hub and campus, like the traditional. And so some people are just, am I following that or am I following the, the distance learning bell schedule? So it's a good question. If you've got a question, if you signed up for band and it doesn't show up on your schedule, Ryan, then what I would do is email your, um, your counselor. And so your counselor can, um, um, so that your counselor can be able to go and see if there's tweaks that they can make to your schedule. Okay. And so if, see the light keeps turning off on me at Kennedy High School. Hold on a second. We have that problem at Jefferson too. You know, it saves energy, which is good, but you know, I, I, I need to, to not. So I have another student, I have another question about, um, there is going to be a recording of this meeting. I will send it out to um, everybody so that if your student was not able to be at this meeting because they're actually watching a different Zoom meeting, so people will be able to get that. I got that question. Um, so on, on, so if we look at the, the school, is, is it too late? I'm going to come back to that question about the schedule again. Um, is it too late to change your classes? That would be a good question to ask your student's counselor. Um, I have no idea about basketball training course. I have no idea about that. Um, but like, I don't know whether or not it's too late to change classes. That would be a question for your student's counselor. In terms of looking at the, the DA schedule. So the idea would be, so we're not gonna have mo Monday of next week. Tuesday and Wednesday are days that are allocated for picking up stuff at school, getting your picture taken, stuff like that. But also we want you, what I sent out in the calendar to my students was that for these two days, I want you to be logging into the hub. I want you to be logging into Canvas. I want you to be starting to familiarize yourself with the class. So then on Thursday for my first class, I'm like, people know where things are. And so what I want you to do next week on Tuesday and Wednesday is pick up your materials at your school, get your picture taken, but I also want you to go and look at Ms. Wood's Canvas class, look at Mr. Carafel's class, check your school email, see if they've emailed you something. 
And then on that Thursday at 8.55, you're gonna log into the link that, Corey, are you gonna email it to your students or how are your students gonna get your link for, for class? You will receive an email uh, before class begins on Thursday. Okay, so he'll send you that link and you'll whoop, you'll do that. And then you're gonna be there for, you know, for an hour. And then if you have me period three, you've already been sent the link that you were gonna use for Thursday, okay? Um, and then you're gonna have you know, lunch time and work time, and then whoever's your period five teacher will have also sent you a link, okay? What's, what's hard about this, and this is not ideal, and I get this, because I'm trying to deal with this with a cute little sixth grader too, is that like you aren't getting a schedule from the school that has all of this with the cute little links for you to click on. And so that might be helpful for you to create on your own. Does that make sense in your own? If I was you, that's what I would do is I would create my own sort of master schedule where I, where I cut and paste those, those little links in. Okay, I hope that that helps. Stop sharing. Let me see here for other questions. It shows I'm in, in, enrolled in two different advisories. You shouldn't have any advisory because this year um, we're not doing advisories for the, um, for the high school. I think they've still got advisory showing up as an advisory teacher. Okay. So don't worry about advisory basically this year is the easy answer yeah. there. Um, ignore the timestamps on the side of the chart. Um, it, on the chart that I just showed you, it, those are the basic ballpark ideas, but your teachers will email you more specifically. Like I'm asking my students to log in five minutes beforehand so we could start on time, you know, and so, but also like if you're in Janelle's class and then you're in my class, then you um, are gonna need to sort of think about the fact that like, I, I'm gonna get the fact that maybe you, you have to go to the bathroom or things like that. In terms of counselor information on the hub, if you, um, if we go back to, let's go, if you go to, I'm just gonna pick Jefferson. So if you go to the school website, because there's a question about how do you figure out who your kid's counselor is. I believe when you log into the hub, it also says who your counselor is. It does. But if you look here on the left-hand side for counseling and you click that button, they will tell you based on your alphabet, what your, who your counselor is and you know what are the phone numbers that you could call, okay? But if you also log into the hub, like if we do, no, I can't do that because then that would violate confidentiality. Anyway, so if you logged into the hub, you could see your student's counselor on that screen, okay? Are there any other questions? I will say to the question about the timestamps, even though DA classes may adjust a little bit, that the student in the rest of the classes, those teachers will probably be pretty tight on the times. That's on that bell schedule. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Well, I want to welcome you to the DA program. This is not the start of the year that we thought we were going to have, but the fact of the matter is, is that we're going to do some exciting learning together and your student is going to have the opportunity to do some great things. And what I think is going to be great is that the great things that your student is going to be able to do is not going to be limited by the pandemic. Okay. We are not going to be limited by this. We're going to give people an exciting opportunity, but I do think it's important for you guys to think about what would be helpful for you. Okay. So that if you need help from adjusting the schedule, adjusting the workload, having some conversations, I think that's important, okay? Because I also don't want you to pretend it's not a pandemic, because that's real. And also, there are other things that are happening in our society that are kind of weighty. Like, I'll be honest, I live two blocks off Lake Street. Last spring was hard. I have friends who live in Kenosha. Like these, you know, this is a, this is a unusual time. And so I don't want you to feel like we also expect you to be an academic robot and that, you know, you know, you're just supposed to go out there and learn. And so I want you to feel like this is an environment that gets to give you opportunities. But I also want you to realize that one of the true tests of 
this moment in time is that you're going to need to learn to ask for what you need so that we can help support you. And Ms. Woods and Mr. Carafel and I are going to ask you for what you need. And we want you to be honest with us so that we can help you because really we want you to be the best learner you can be at this particular moment in time. Okay. So thank you very much for coming and thank you for giving us the opportunity to help enrich your, your student. And students, welcome to DA. Thank you.